What's up everybody, Matt Moran here for another weekly update. So lots of uh, reveals this week ahead of the Geneva Motor Show and some other cool news as well. So we'll get right into it. The first is a brand new Ferrari supercar has been revealed. It's the Ferrari 488 Pista, uh, which stands for track. Uh, so this is the uh, version that was previously referred to as the GTO, the special series, whatever. It's a speciality version of the 488, essentially. So it's got 711 horsepower, 568 pound-feet of torque from its uh it's the same twin turbo 3.9 liter v8 as the standard 48 that's just you know 50 extra horsepower here with the pista version uh and so zero to 62 they're saying is 2.85 seconds uh, so we're getting down not even 2.8 2.85 they're just going for every last millisecond they can 124 miles per hour takes 7.6 seconds uh 211 mile per hour top speed and they're claiming a dry weight of 2,820 21 pounds um, with some optional lightweight features. So I'm not sure what that includes, and that's you know be we'll have to wait and see you know with actual wet weight you know curb weight what that would end up being. But um, still sounds impressive nonetheless. They're claiming that uh, overall it's 198 pounds lighter than a regular 488. So. A uh, good amount of, uh, you know, weight loss there. Uh, and interestingly, all those numbers, uh, all the specs basically line up to be almost identical with the McLaren 720S. So uh, pretty cool that, you know, they're going to be competing with that and those two cars should be uh, neck and neck there. So anyway, uh, we should be seeing the full reveal, of course, with more pictures and whatnot at uh, the Geneva Motor Show here. Um, but until then, uh, great to see those few pictures already. Um, another vehicle is officially revealed ahead of Geneva was the 2019 Porsche 911 GT3 RS. So still has the same great naturally aspirated 4 liter flat 6, 520 horsepower, which is 20 more than before, 346 pound feet of torque there uh and so zero to 60 only takes three seconds flat uh it's 0.1 second faster than the outgoing gt3 rs it's got a retune seven speed pdk 193 mile per hour top speed now um and the arrow on this car of course is very aggressive as you would expect for a track ready version uh, it's got a larger front lip larger side skirts a restyled rear diffuser um and they're saying that at 124 miles per hour the gt3 rs produces two times the downforce of the current GT3. So that's uh, how much, you know, it's pretty impressive. They also have retuned the rear steering, the Porsche Torque Vectoring Plus system. There's new helper springs, both in the front and the rear for more planted ride. There's the NACA ducts uh, in the hood, which help to keep the brakes cooler. Um, it also has a magnesium roof on the standard version, a polyurethane front and rear bumper, um, carbon fiber front lid, you know, for the uh, front trunk there. Um, and uh, it's also got carbon fiber fenders, light Lightweight glass, titanium muffler and exhaust tips, lightweight door uh, panels with fabric pulls, you know, which is something that's been around in the past couple of generations, and less sound insulation as well, they're saying. Now, you can even add more lightweightness if you'd like. There's optional magnesium wheels that reduce the weight by 25 more pounds, uh, and those are $13,000. There's also a Weissage package, uh, which is $18,000, and get, gets rid of another 13 pounds um, with a carbon fiber roof, front and rear sway bars, coupling rods, and uh, carbon fiber steering wheel trim and paddles uh, for the shifters there. Um, and so they're claiming total weight, I believe, with the, that package is 3150 53 pounds um, and I believe they're quoting curb weight there but I'm not sure um, and uh, anyway that's going to be starting at $187,500 plus an extra thousand for delivery uh, and they're going to be uh, starting to be delivered here in late 2018 so anyway cool to see that uh, other portion news very briefly is a single picture has leaked out of the 992 911 back end um, and uh, it just basically lines up exactly with the camouflage prototypes we've seen running around so this is certainly legit uh just wasn't supposed to get out and somehow got out uh we should be seeing the full reveal uh, of the 992 version here though at the paris motor show in october um so anyway cool to see that Another picture that leaked out, uh, unintentionally I suppose, was leaked out by Salento V12, who uh, posted this picture of the digital dash in this new high-performance Aventador that supposedly, according to, as you can see, the dashboard there called the SVJ, um, which most certainly will stand for Super Veloce Jota, which is, uh, you know, the uh, racing version uh, that they I did a special edition for the Diablo, but this, of course, dates back to the Miura. I actually got a ride in a Jota Miura many, many years ago, and I'll link the video for those that are curious to see that. 
Um, and so that's where this Jota name comes from. And uh, so now they're going to be putting it here on the Eventador, which is a convenient way to uh, have a new SV version since there's already an Eventador SV. You just call Jota for the racing version, a little more sporty, and uh, be good to go. And of course, we've already seen the pictures of this spot with the camouflage on it and it looks pretty close to being ready to go. So I'm guessing this will be like a surprise reveal for the Geneva Motor Show, um, but could always be later on in the year too. Who knows? But anyway, interesting to uh, get that little confirmation. Uh, Rolls-Royce uh, is a funny company sometimes. So Rolls-Royce has teased uh, a funny new feature that the Cullinan SUV uh, is going to have. And they keep doing teasers every week here uh, leading up to the Geneva Motor Show. So I'm guessing this will be revealed at Geneva. Um, anyway, this new feature is called the Viewing Suite. And um, it's got some really great uh, PR speak in here uh, for this. So anyway, it's little leather chairs and a cocktail table that fold out of the rear tailgate um, automatically. And so Rolls-Royce uh, describes it as a luxuriously comfortable viewing platform to take in the world's most breathtaking vistas or view a sports event or even watch their children take part in their school sports day. Wherever one ventures, the Rolls-Royce Cullinan viewing suite guarantees the best seat in the house. So I can see, okay, you're in a beautiful location, you want to sit on your tailgate, and if you're a Rolls-Royce owner, just sitting on your tailgate is far too unrefined. You must have a leather pad to sit on with a cocktail table. The whole thing's just so outrageous. Um, but then, you know, to say you can sit there and watch your children's sports games, like... I, I would really hate to be the parents that roll up in a Rolls-Royce Cullinan and pop out these little leather chairs and sit there sipping wine or something while you're watching your kid play soccer. Just, ugh. Uh, I'm trying to not be, um, you know, close-minded about this, but it really, really doesn't portray Rolls-Royce owners in a very good light, in my opinion. And it's also saying you can hang out at sports events, like as if people are going to be taking these Cullinans tailgating. How many Cullinan owners go down to a football game and crack open a dozen beers and get hammered uh, in the back of the Rolls Royce? Like, I highly doubt that, that Rolls Royce owners even tailgate. Those are the ones that are in the private boxes tailgating with, like, the owner of the company, not, uh, you know, the people that are hanging out in parking lots, uh, you know, with a cooler full of beer. So... I just, I don't know, the whole thing just seems kind of strange. But anyway, um, you know, it is what it is, and so we'll see the Cullinan, I'm guessing, here in a couple of weeks at Geneva. Uh, some more practical news here. Volvo has officially revealed... Uh, two different things uh, for ahead of the Geneva Motor Show here. The first is the 2019 Volvo V60, which is this gorgeous new wagon that Volvo is going to be selling here. Uh, it's a little smaller than the V60 or the V90 wagon, I should say. Uh, you know, and so this will be based on the S60, which will be coming this summer. They're doing the wagon version first, interestingly enough, and you know, doing the sedan afterwards. Um, we only have the European specs for it so far, so we don't know too many details for the American version. Um, but we do know they all are going to have the same 2-liter turbocharged and supercharged four-cylinder engine. Uh, starts out with a 310-horsepower T5 all-wheel drive version. And then there you can step up to a 340-horsepower T6, which is a plug-in hybrid. Um, so it's the same, I think, engine output. It just gives you a little bit of an electric boost there with you know an extra 30 horsepower from those electric motors. And that one they're saying will do 0-60 to 60 in 4.8 seconds. And then there's going to be the T8 version, um, which uh, in this application will do 390 horsepower and, of course, have that hybrid element that gives you that additional boost. Just, you know, larger battery pack, more powerful electric motors there. Um, and I was really impressed with the T8 and the XC90 or the XC60. So I'm sure uh, putting it into a smaller, beautiful little wagon um, is really going to make for a sweet recipe. Uh, there's also going to be diesels available in certain markets, but, of course, we won't get those here in the States. Um, all Eight-speed automatic for all models. Um, and compared to the V90, it's... It's uh, two inches shorter in wheelbase, seven inches shorter overall, but it still has a much roomier uh, interior. Uh, you know, I think it said two inches of additional legroom in the back, uh, way more cargo space, um, and all the same advanced safety tech that you see on all the other Volvos these days that uh, would take me five minutes to read off. Um, so, you know, just all that great safety tech that they always have. Other Volvo uh, news here is the XC40, they just announced a third trim. So previously it was just been the Momentum and the R-Design trim. Now you can also get an inscription trim, uh, which gives you some of the nicer features of the higher end uh, Volvos, like the chrome window trim, a crystal gear shifter, and driftwood interior inlays. Um, and so pricing hasn't been announced yet for those, but um, you know, figure the same kind of upcharge you get on the inscription trim over the other trims of the other Volvo models. Um, they also announced a three-cylinder engine version of the XC40. 
XC40, which we will not get here in the States. You actually can get it overseas with a manual transmission as well, which is really cool. Neither of those are coming to the States though, but we will get this three cylinder engine in a future plug-in hybrid version, most likely, um, that will pair that engine with some kind of electric boost so that you know it has more power, because I guess the three cylinder just is not quick enough um, or whatever for American roads, and so that's why they uh, are not giving us that version. Um, so, but anyway, interesting to see that. Another SUV that was revealed ahead of the Geneva Motor Show was the 2019 Hyundai Santa Fe. Um, and that's really a great looking uh, you know, SUV. Now we have all the pictures of it here, including several of the interior where you can see it now actually does have a partial uh, digital uh, instrument cluster as well, which has a couple different modes and things like that. Um, as far as powertrains uh, go, you can get a base engine, which is a 2.4 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder with 185 horsepower. Uh, and then there's also a two liter uh, uh, turbocharged four cylinder with has uh, 232 horsepower. And that's gonna be optional, of course. There's diesels, once again, for other markets, not for us. Um, there's gonna be eight speed automatics for all of them. They get revised suspension as well uh, to make it more comfortable for the ride. Um, you can get an optional load leveling suspension, um, which is uh, pretty cool with, uh, helps with towing and large loads. There's also lots of safety tech here in this new Santa Fe, which is one of the big things about it. Um, and I've previously ranted uh, about the safe exit assist, which uh, really insults people's intelligence into thinking that you know they don't even have to look out the window before opening the door, um, which is really sad. But again, I won't go down that rant. Um, other features it's going to have here, though, include lane keep assist, stop and go adaptive cruise control, and an around view monitor. Um, and uh, But another interesting thing that I also find really sad, but I'll try and keep this short, is they also also announced it's going to have a new rear seat occupant alert um, and unlike some other systems that just use seat belts in order to gauge what's going on uh, this one actually uses ultrasonic sensors to detect motion of kids or pets in the back seat. So since most people don't buckle up their pets, even though they should, um, you know, this will uh, detect pets and things like that as well. But I still think it's really sad. You need to have ultrasonic sensors in the back seat in order to tell people, hey, your kids or your pets are in the back seat. Like these people that supposedly buy Santa Fe's can't look out their window to open their door safely. Uh, you know, they can't uh, check their, you know, behind them to see if they're leaving their children or pets in the back like is this what humanity has come to like again i really i'm not gonna rant again but it's just really sad that these are even things that again hyundai thinks are valuable but sadly they will be valuable and i'm sure popular as well um but anyway interesting to see all that and a couple stories from mitsubishi this past week the first is the mitsubishi eclipse cross uh, has landed in america now the first shipments have arrived and they'll be going on sale early next month here in march uh starting price though the pricing is really good for these i have to say despite the name i think this thing's going to sell really well because they priced it well. Starting price is $24,290, including destination. So you can get one of these things 24 grand all day long. There's going to be three different trims. ES, which is uh, starting off with front wheel drive, but you can option all wheel drive on that one for only $600 more. Really reasonable. Then the next step up is the LE trim, which gets all wheel drive as standard. And that one is still only $25,890. Um, and then there's a the top of the line SE for $27,390. Um, but there's no options packages for ba so basically the SE trim is fully loaded top of the line model you're not going to get any more expensive than $27,390 which, uh, I mean, it's a compact crossover, but it's not that compact. I actually saw one uh, this past weekend at the Pittsburgh Auto Show, and it, it's a reasonably sized SUV. It's not quite as squished as some of the other compact crossovers. Um, that's going to be really competitive. Um, unfortunately, you know, it is not sporty in any sense of the word. Um, the powertrain, it uses the 1.5 liter direct injected turbo four-cylinder engine that only does 152 horsepower, 184 pound-feet of torque, though, so decent amount of torque there. Um, anyway, there's lots of safety tech too available. Again, again, you have to remember, $27,000 fully loaded car has, avail has available blind spot monitoring. That's all included in this top of the line trim. Lane change assist, auto emergency braking, lane departure warning, and even has headlights that automatically adjust the brightness depending on the conditions to not blind people, which is nice. Um, there's also a seven inch infotainment screen with a touchpad controller, similar to kind of a, like a Lexus setup they have in their new stuff. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto is standard. Uh, color heads up display you can even get here with this uh, SE one panoramic sunroof and even heated rear seats so again all that stuff for 27 grand 
really, really impressive. Uh, not to mention they also have the 10-year powertrain warranty that Mitsubishi has. Um, so, uh, yeah, I know Mitsubishi's kind of been on the brink of, you know, uh, just kind of falling off into the abyss. I think this is what's going to put them back on the map. Um, with how hot these crossovers are these days, uh, despite the name, I think this thing is going to be very, very impressive and seen everywhere as far as just, you know, from a sales standpoint. You know, for us enthusiasts, it does nothing really, I'm sure. But, uh, anyway, and I should be able to uh, review one of those fairly soon after they go on sale as well. So stay tuned for that if you're curious. Other Mitsubishi news, though, as they've announced some revisions for the 2019 Outlander plug-in hybrid. Um, and so it's this is, again, for Europe, because uh, the 2018s are just arriving in the United States here, the plug-in hybrid version. Um, and I actually reviewed those, uh, one of those, and I'll be uh, posting that review here this weekend as a bonus review. Um, so that'll be the 2018 version. But um, anyway, these the plug-in hybrids have been on sale in Europe for several years now. So that's why they're doing this refresh already. Um and there's some pretty significant changes. They're swapping out the 2-liter four-cylinder engine that's currently in the uh, Outlander PHEV for a 2.4-liter instead, which uh, has higher torque, smoother operation, and overall higher efficiency, they're saying, although they didn't actually give specific numbers. They said there's a 10% improvement in the drivetrain uh, aspects, and so uh, doing the math for that, the rear motor now should do about 66 kilowatt hours um, as far as power goes. Battery now should be 13.8 kilowatt hours, which is a bump over the 12 kilowatt hour battery it has currently so it should give it a little bit more electric range but again we don't have any details um, on that as far as exterior stuff goes, we got a new front grille, LED headlights now, front skid plate, and new wheels. Um, there aren't, aren't any interior pictures yet. Again, we just got some early info here, and it's not going to be revealed fully until Geneva. But on the inside, it should have new quilted fine leather upholstery, all new hip-hugging front seats, revised switch gear, a new instrument panel, new trimming, new rear, out, rear AC outlets, and more. Um, so that's what they've officially said, so we'll have to wait and see for all that. But anyway, these are going to be showing up late 2018 for Europe and not until uh, next year sometime, I'm sure, for us, considering we're just now getting the 2018s. Most likely sometime this around this time next year is when we'll see these 2019s here in the States. But anyway, uh, should just make that an even more compelling purchase. Um, other uh, stuff for Geneva here is Lexus has teased the their small crossover, uh, the production version of the UX uh, that they just had a concept of last year. Um, and so... Anyway, that'll be bringing that. The Geneva, we just have the one picture of the, you know, full uh, went, full width uh, taillights, I should say. And, uh, yeah, so that'll be interesting to see that reveal. And Lotus this past week has unveiled uh, yet again the fastest street legal Lotus ever built. I feel like it's every other week they're saying, this is the fastest Lotus we've ever built. And it's like, I mean, it's keeping them busy, but it's like, come on. It's just every other week, it's this is the fastest one we ever made. This time it's the Lotus 311 430. Very impressive, though. I'm not knocking it in any way. It only weighs 2,028 pounds, and it has a 3.5-liter supercharged Toyota V6 that does 430 horsepower, 324.5 pound-feet of torque. So 430 horsepower in a car that's 2,000 pounds, essentially. Like, crazy. 0 to 60 in 3.1 seconds, 180 mile per hour top speed. Um, and uh, of course, we're not getting them in America because we haven't uh, gotten any of these uh, 311s in the States. They're only building 20 of them for those of you in the UK. They're going to be 102,000 pounds there. Um, and so anyway, cool to see that anyway. Another very rare vehicle um, that was revealed here is uh, BMW is doing the uh, 2018 M4 Convertible Edition 3rd Jahare. Um, and so they're only building 300 of these. Only 30 are coming to the States and only 10 of those are going to be in this special yellow color uh, that's going to be called Mandarin 2. The other color is going to be uh, Macau Blue. And so anyway, it basically is an M4 with a competition package on it, uh, but it's in the convertible, which is a cool combo. Uh, black trim is a special thing too, and you can also get uh, either matching blue or yellow contrasting leather and stitching if you'd like. And there's carbon fiber trim inside, um, and that's it. You know, it's just basically a special color combo. They didn't announce any kind of pricing, but I mean, they're probably going to be over $100,000, and they're probably all sold out anyway because, again, they're 
only making 10 in this yellow color for the entire United States. So yeah, uh, not going to probably see too many of those around, but anyway, cool to see that. Uh, Volkswagen has teased uh, their concept they're bringing to the Geneva Motor Show. It's the fourth ID concept. This one is going to be called the ID Vision or Vision. Uh, so it's just vision with Z's because that's what they've been doing here. Instead of bus, it's buzz. Um, and so uh, this one's a little different though because uh, it's almost, it's, it's fully autonomous. So all the other ones, you know, they had like retractable steering wheel that, you know, you could use and it was kind of uh, this halfway point of fully autonomous but still having a car you can drive. This one, no steering wheel included at all. And really, if you look inside, I mean, this is just sketches we're seeing, so we're going to have to wait for the official version to be revealed here. But there's no physical controls inside other than like what, two knobs there and then it looks like there's no screens either, which is a strange exclusion for a futuristic car considering everyone is obsessed with screens and that's all we stare at all day is screens. So uh, I'm not sure, uh, you know, why there's no screens in this car. Um, but other than that, you know, it's just basically very simple and clean design. Um, but they're saying there's no knobs or anything uh, really because everything's going to be called, be controlled by either voice or gestures. Um, and again, uh, this is just a concept. So we'll see how much of this stuff actually does uh, go to production. Um, but anyway, as far as more practical things here, you can see it's all, it's supposed to kind of show off what an ID version of, you know, the full size uh, luxurious Volkswagen would be like. Um, the same powertrain that the other, other ID models have um, with about 302 horsepower from those electric motors. Uh, but they're saying for this one, the range would be 413 miles. And I'm guessing that's because they have a longer um, body to put more batteries into. Um, Anyway, so we already know the other three ID models have been approved for production. We know that here in the States, we're going to get the ID Cross first, which is the crossover version, I think 2020, 2022 for the ID Buzz. And they said the regular ID hatchback might come a little bit after that. So this thing at its earliest, I could see maybe showing up in 2025. But if they want to keep it a fully autonomous vehicle, I don't know if that tech will be fully ready to go by 2025. It could be. We're only in the year 2018. We'll have to wait and see. Um, but anyway, interesting to see that I'm sure we'll see more soon. Some more practical and handy um, Volkswagen news here, actually from Audi, um, is that they've revealed uh, they're going to be doing this new feature for uh, the uh, 2018 Audis. It's going to have an integrated toll module, is what it's called, ITM. And basically, it's like what we have in Pennsylvania here is called Easy Pass, and there's other you know brands of those uh, state-run you know toll uh, little modules. And anyway, it's going to be built into every into the cars uh, behind the rearview mirror, built in from the factory. So there's no need for your state pass. You just sync it up with the infotainment system, uh, put in your info or whatever, and you're good. Um, Audi says it's going to be compatible with almost every toll road in America, working with 97.8% of toll booths. Um, it's going to be available starting in late this year, late 2018, on certain models. They didn't say which models, but the picture that we see here is of an Audi A8. So, I mean, we're assuming it would at least start in the A8 and then probably trickle its way down. Um, but and there's no word on the pricing for it yet. That's gonna be the only thing because it's a nice little convenience. But if it's super expensive, like it's not that bad to have a little uh, easy pass thing or whatever. So we'll have to wait and see. Uh, but anyway, cool to see that. Um, and uh, some other Volkswagen Group news. It could be pretty big, and this hasn't been officially confirmed yet, but it's. It's pretty safe bet. Uh, Auto Car, I was sitting down with a Porsche executive, and uh, they're reporting here that Porsche is going to quit offering diesel engines entirely um, and all their models globally. Now, currently, even the new Cayenne doesn't have a new diesel, which shows they're probably phasing out diesels anyway if the new Cayenne doesn't have it. But currently, it's only available in the Panamera and the uh, Macan, and both of those, uh, they said they're getting rid of it. Um, and so, I mean, there's just very little demand, and with all the scandal with you know, all the diesel gate stuff, um, it's just, you know, that plus they're focused on electric cars. There's just, it seems like there's just no room for diesels anymore. Um, and certainly makes sense, you know, for them. Uh, so anyway, uh, kind of crazy, but interesting to see that. And if you're a regular viewer of the weekly updates, you might remember a couple weeks ago, I mentioned how AutoGuide found a carb document uh, talking about the 2019 Camaro and how it could get a new uh, transmission option. So, you know, the carb uh, filing is, you know, what's going to be certified for emissions and all that kind of stuff for the upcoming model year. And it gave us a clue that um, GM was considering uh, putting a seven speed manual in as an option 
option uh, in addition to the six-speed manual and the eight-speed automatic. But GM has since withdrawn that paperwork, uh, and in, instead they have they submitted some new carb documents here um, that show what is most likely the final and makes a lot more sense offerings for the 2019 Camaro. Um, and that new document is showing there's going to be a six-speed manual still and the ten-speed automatic transmission instead of the eight-speed, which uh, makes uh, total sense considering that uh, that's the same transmission that's currently in the new Mustang. It was co-developed with uh, GM and Ford. It's in the Raptor. It's in the ZL1 Camaro already. And so putting it in the standard Camaro should make it very uh, fair. But it'll be very interesting because the two arch rivals, the Camaro and the Mustang, will have essentially the same automatic transmission in them. They'll have a little bit of different tuning, but they're running the same 10-speed auto, which uh, will be really interesting to see how that pans out. But, um, you know, both are great cars, and so I'm glad that, you know, they were both able to work on that. And it looks like, you know, the uh, 2019 Camaro could be getting that. As far as when we'll actually see this refreshed 2019 Camaro, uh, it sounds like the New York Auto Show is most likely the place. Um, there's really no other opportunity uh, if they want to put it out, you know, before the end of the year. So, um, you know, it sounds like that might be when it ends up coming out. Other pony car news that's pretty interesting uh, is an interesting revelation about the 2019 Bullet Mustang, the car that I'll be ordering here in just a couple of weeks. Um, the title magazine, um, which is this magazine, I think, in Canada, they spoke with Ford of Canada's product marketing manager, Shannon White, um, who said in this interview, you know, a bunch of the standard stuff they've been talking about with the new bullets. Um, but one interesting new thing that uh, came out of this interview um, was that she said the Bullet's going to be available for two model years, 2019 and 2020. Um, and so there still isn't any kind of word on pricing for them. We do know that ordering is going to open up March 12th, uh, or at least that's what all the documents so far have suggested. Um, so that's just a couple of weeks away before we'll hopefully have some more details as far as at least pricing, if nothing else. But pretty crazy, they're going to be offering it for two model years. Now, they did that for the uh, second gen Bullets, the 2008 and 2009, you know, there was a little bit of an overlap there, but that was mostly because of the recession and they still had more cars left to build. So they extended an additional model year. So offering this for two full years will certainly help with markups. Hopefully, you know, dealers um, won't be as optimistic about these things being super rare, super limited edition because they're building them for two years, not just one. Um, but that didn't hinder anyone from asking for markups on the Shelbys. So we'll have to wait and see. But anyway, just a little uh, less pressure there. You know, it's not going to be super rare or hard to get, hopefully. Um, and so anyway, cool to hear all that. Other four news though is that a, a diesel ranger prototype was spied running around we know it's a diesel because there was the word diesel in tape over the um, fuel door there so they're pretty obvious they're not trying to hide it this was spy testing in michigan though which is interesting because you know ranger diesels have been around for the other, the other global markets where the ranger has been around forever but um, you know, the fact this is testing in the States could mean we actually will be getting a diesel in the States. That certainly would make sense considering Chevy offers the diesel in the Colorado and they want to be competitive. Um, and also it's interesting to note, uh, I think, uh, auto blog, uh, posted up that the, uh, 3.2 liter inline five diesel engine, um, that you can actually get that of already in the Ranger overseas, that diesel, but that diesel engine is actually carb certified, I believe already for the States because it's in, um, the, uh, Ford transit. Uh, so if it's they can just transfer that certification over it really doesn't cost them a lot to get that you know motor put into the Ranger there and you know, make it very competitive um, so that is very likely going to be the engine we'll see if this in fact does get offered in America also this one has roof rails and like a bed roll bar going on which is uh, what the wild track version overseas has we could be getting that as kind of a mid-grade point before the full-on Raptor or something like that again this could just be something they put on there for other reasons who knows um, but anyway, interesting to see that. Another vehicle that was spied yet again was the Toyota Supra, which I know every week I'm talking about the Supra. I'm sorry. It's just really, really uh, an exciting thing as it continues to develop, and we're almost at the end of the waiting period, it seems, because in addition to uh, what you can see, uh, Best Motoring Magazine last week, you know, they leaked out some images of what they think it's going to look like, and those images seem spot on. So they either have some insider info or something, um, because we with less camera, we can see now the turn signals, how they kind of scoop down towards the middle of the front bumper there. We can see the headlights clearly. We can see the cutout of the front bumper. Everything is very clear, um, which means this thing is right on the verge of being revealed, I think. And Best Motoring Magazine seems to agree. They're reporting that although it's, you know, it seems like we're going to only see the racing version or whatever at Geneva in a couple of weeks, just a few weeks after that, we'll be seeing the production version. Supposedly at the New York Auto Show is when Best Motoring Magazine is saying they think it's going to be revealed, which makes sense with how close it seems to be ready for production, ready to go. We're going to be basically seeing the production version in Geneva just with some racing stuff 
stuff on it. It would make sense to just to have an official reveal here in the States a few weeks later. So um, cool to see that. And, uh, it's very exciting. I know that Powertrain, some people are iffy about, but I'm personally still excited to see this thing. I finally uh, see the light of day. Um, Another vehicle that's uh, likely going to have a New York Auto Show debut is the Cadillac XT4 that was spied yet again. But the big news this time is we now got some clear shots of the interior. And so what we can see is a big deal for Cadillac. They're getting rid of all those capacitive touch buttons that they always had that everyone hated. I personally didn't mind them. I thought they were cool. They worked well enough. But so many people hated those capacitive touch buttons. And so I think uh, Cadillac has given in and they're listening and they're going to get rid of them completely. And so um, you can see it's got standard little buttons there, a nice little row, and some of them even look metal. Uh, you can also see uh, there's a physical gear shifter again. There's going to be a little knob to control the infotainment even although it still does look like there's lots of fingerprints on the screen so i'm guessing it's also touch screen thankfully hopefully um but anyway, uh, it looks like a pretty good interior there. So I'm, I'm guessing we'll see that at New York. Uh, but again, could be later as well. But anyway, cool to see that. Also, another vehicle that's likely to be shown in New York was the uh, refresh uh, Fiat 500X, uh, which was spied. And it looks like it's just got some revised headlights that look a little bit smaller, you know, some changes to the front bumper there a little bit. And then the back end, you get those taillights that instead of having the red lenses, now have the clear lenses with uh, some little red elements, very similar to what we saw with the refresh for the Jeep Cherokee. I think you can expect that same treatment there to the same shape taillights for the 500X. Um, and anyway, they're saying this is going to be a 2019 model year for these revisions, for this and the Renegade. So um, most likely we'll see both of those revealed at New York, uh, but you know, it could be some other time as well. And the last news this week is another vehicle that was spied. That's Mercedes-Benz GLB, which is a boxier uh, version alongside the GLC in size, maybe a little bit bigger since this looks like it's going to have some type of third row, at least in some trims. Um, but this is based on the GLA platform, the A-Class platform. So because of that, it means it's front-wheel drive based um, you know going to have probably just a little four-cylinder engines uh, the dual clutch seven speed uh, which isn't great um, but you know it's that's probably the combo this is going to have um, but it's most likely just going to be a cheaper uh, g-wagon it's kind of what they're going for you know it's got the boxy shape um, although the headlights aren't round it looks like they're just gonna be similar to like a GLC or something like that the taillights actually look really similar to the brand new Range Rover taillights too which is interesting that they're so similar um, but that's another interesting thing there you can see see um Anyway, uh, Motor One doesn't think we're going to be seeing this car till the end of this year or early next year. Uh, but I personally think, um, considering it's already running production headlights and taillights, it's likely we'll see this at the Paris Motor Show in October, maybe even sooner. Uh, we'll have to wait and see. Um, but you know, so it should be available sometime next year. Um, and anyway, uh, you know, we—it's probably not going to be Detroit because I know you know Mercedes has been talking about leaving the Detroit Auto Show and not making an appearance next year. So I wouldn't count on anything from Mercedes at Detroit. Um, so it's either got to be, uh, you know, Paris in October, LA in November, or, you know, New York next year or Geneva or something. Um, so anyway, interesting to see that regardless. And yeah, that's it for all the news this week, guys. So let me know your thoughts about everything in the comments below. Thank you guys very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Take care.